My chronic pain dates back to a, uh, a car accident that I had when I was 18 years old. And it was a head-on collision, not my fault. But uh, it was a very large Plymouth against a very small Toyota that I was driving. And it was, uh, um, it was a small Toyota station wagon. And when, right after the crash, and I sort of counted all my fingers and toes and realized I was okay and made sure my mother was okay, she was a passenger in the car, uh, I couldn't find my glasses. And uh, I finally figured out that I had been flung back so hard in the seat that maybe they were behind me. Well, I checked the back seat and they weren't there and I found them in the very, very back of the station wagon. They had flown off my head and into the very back. So the whiplash was bad enough to send my glasses flying off my face and into the back of the station wagon. So that was the beginning of my bad neck. And chronic migraines started at that probably two years later from that. And uh, so I'm 57 years old now, and I was, say, 20 years, 20 years old when that all really started. So I guess I've been having them for, you know, 37 years or so. And, uh, and I was already a migraine sufferer. I had my first migraine, but that was just, you know, from humidity or from illness or whatever. I, have, I had one when I was three years old. I can still remember it. But the real chronic, chronic stuff happened from the, uh, from the accident. And so 37 years. I also had an odd, very odd experience in that I was struck by lightning when I was 25. And... There is so little um, in the way of any kind of investigation or any kind of research around because there just aren't enough people that have survived uh, being hit by lightning that they haven't done any research. But I was hit on the while riding a motorcycle, and it, the pain or the, the the electricity went down my left side, and that's where all the damage is in my neck as well. So no one knows the accident really was a watershed when I look back at my life in terms of my level of activity and I really look at is that I was a really active very much into sports and act very good tennis player I taught I was a, a sort of semi-professional uh, and did a lot of other sports as well and never had any restriction in that area and then after the accident, and uh, I finished university and got my first job, and by then, the headaches had started. And it very much restricted my ability to work as hard as I wanted to or to do the activities I wanted to because I could never plan. All of a sudden, it would make, I'd make a plan, like, let's go play tennis, and then I'd one, if I made it and, and I wasn't having a headache that day, if I had to look up to see the toss for a serve, I'd give myself a headache. And I didn't understand at that point in time why I was giving myself a headache, but I was. And um, so before, it was just a completely different life. I had none of these cares. I never worried about going out or doing anything or any of that sort of a thing. And then afterwards, the pain was just an overriding fact of my life. It was just, it restricted everything. It restricted what I did, it restricted what I planned, it restricted absolutely everything. Now, I, at that point in time, I just wasn't willing to believe that there wasn't an answer. I was going to defeat this pain. Damn it, it's not gonna get the better of me. So off I toddled to, you know, to, to find the various cures and stuff, so it, it I still tried to do all of the things I was trying, you know, had done before the accident. But who's kidding who? I couldn't. And that became very obvious. By age 27, I got a migraine that lasted for four years. All day, every day, never went away. Couldn't make it go away. Didn't seem to matter. And I finally, I went to my GP at the time and he introduced me to Tylenol number ones and said, well, the least you could do is take something more powerful than straight Tylenols. And this is all before Imitrex, 
the drug, the migraine drug, the first of the migraine drugs was on the market. So that didn't come out until I was 36 years old. So initially I started just taking handfuls of Tylenol number ones and, uh, and they initially worked briefly, you know, it would get rid of the headache, but the headache would come back. And then I thought, well, then, of course, I started having liver problems because of taking all of that Tylenol. And then I would started to see uh, a homeopath who put me on various drops and potions and, and things, and that didn't help. And so then I saw a naturopath, and she helped my liver a fair amount, but not my migraines. And then I went to see an acupuncturist who swore up and down that, oh, no, he could help my migraines, and no... Um, he couldn't help my migraines. And then at age 36, I had a new GP, and um, thankfully, he got me onto Imitrex. And oh my gosh, Imitrex worked wonderfully. It really got rid of me, and it got me off of Tylenols. But then I was taking an Imitrex a day, and well, they didn't like that very much. That wasn't the way Imitrex was supposed to be taken. You're not supposed to have more than five migraines a month. And I said, well, sorry to not be average. I couldn't, I'm, I'm getting them every day. What do you mind do? You know, what am I supposed to do? You know, I had three kids. I was self-employed. I can't stop. I mean, you know, so I was taking these things by the, you know, I was taking an Imitrex and then I went back to taking handfuls of Tylenol 1s because they had helped before and so I was doing all of that and for the next several years I would either take, oh, there was the next one, Imitrex, and then there was Zomig and then there was Altamig and I can't remember all the megs that, that were out there, you know, the various and sundry different uh, potions that they came out with for migraines, and each one would work a little better or a little differently, and I would try that for a while, but I never ever ever got something better than that. I remember going to see Sunnybrook. I finally got a, a, an appointment to see, uh, oh, he was the latest and greatest specialist in pain at, uh, at Sunnybrook, and I finally got to, to see him, and he sat in my office, and he asked me the questions, and I said, yep, I got that pain, yep, I got that pain, and he reached behind my neck and pinched my neck, and he said, does that hurt? And I said, yeah. He said, yeah, okay, thanks. I said, so what do I do? He said, nothing. He said, you got it. He said, you're, you're just, basically, you have no, Nothing, there is nothing to be done. There is, you are just basically in a lot of pain and that's the way your life is going to be. And throughout all of these visits and doctors and that sort of stuff, I just kept thinking to myself, this can't be right. There must be, like I can't be the only one suffering this way. And I, you know, so I just kept on the journey of like, there's gotta be a better way to handle this. And on I'd go and on I'd go. Well, about age 45 now, so you got to think, you know, age 27, four-year migraine. I'm now twice my age. We're up to age 45. Not twice, I guess, because not. But anyways, close enough. Age 45, finally a doctor says to me, he says, you ever had your neck looked at? Nope. Well, I think we better run an MRI on your neck because I think it's your neck that's causing these problems. Had the MRI. Came back, I had four herniated discs in my neck from that first accident. He said, Mr. O'Connell, I'm sorry. I thought you were just trying to get drugs out of me. And uh, so here's a prescription for Percodans, or Percocets, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you signed up for a program to get and see if you're a candidate for rhizotomies, which is a, an operation whereby they go in and with using sound waves actually, they burn out the nerves at the levels of the, uh, where the discs are herniated and that relieves the pain. They did the operation and hallelujah, I was a lot better. Now, not so much better that I could get off of all of the drugs and that doctor couldn't understand that and would not accept that the, I'm still in pain here. You keep wanting me to take nothing. And, and I switched doctors. I began seeing a doctor who had been 
recommended to me by my chiropractor. And he decided to get out of the pain business within about three months of me starting to see him, which I thought was awful. But he put me in touch with Howard Jacobs, who was, has been the savior of my life, basically. Because once I started seeing Howard, um, Howard started off by saying, you know, have you ever had nerve blocks? I said, well, yes. He said, were they helpful? And I said, no. And he said, well, that's because I wasn't doing them. Oh, well, I said, Howard, I'm happy to give you a shot. I said, you know, if somebody told me dancing naked in the full moonlight might work, I'd try it once. So by all means, give it a shot. Well, first of all, he did it on both sides. He didn't just do it on the side that hurt. And he put in more freezing than anybody had ever put in before. And son of a gun, it worked. So this guy seems to know what he's talking about. And over the course of about two years, he managed to balance my drugs out and balance out the nerve blocks and set up the schedule for the rhizotomies. And at the ripe old age of 48 or so, I had kind of a quality of life back. Now, the one thing is that I also came to accept that I was never going to get better. I'd have a quality of life, but it was always going to be with treatment and with the correct pharmaceuticals involved. I was never going to get better. So, but that was okay, because boy, that was a whole lot better than what I'd been doing, which was awful. It's not something I would recommend to anybody. That's, uh, you know, even my worst enemy, I don't think I would put through something like this. So. You know, those of us that have got chronic pain conditions um, bear the problem of not having a broken bone sticking out or blood pouring down our heads or anything like that. And because, particularly because I wear a suit and tie to work every day and I look... Um, healthy and normal and I don't have any outward symptoms at all, although I do. When I have a, a real, really bad migraine, those who know me can see it in my eyes and how pale I am. But for many years early on, people would wonder, you know, what do you mean you have a headache? What do you mean it won't go away? Like, come on, we have to get going. We have to get do, you know, we got to do these things. And, and, and particularly when I worked for others, there was, there was no understanding. And I don't blame people so much for that as much as just a total lack of understanding on their part. And, you know, this isn't a lack of education. I mean, it's just not something that they were aware of. That was not, you know, they weren't teaching this in public school. I mean, that just, it was the way, unless they had had family contact with somebody, they just didn't know any differently. And the other part of it is, is that many, many, many more women suffer from migraines than do men. So I had the extra benefit or problem of being looked upon as being a bit of a wuss because I had headaches and being, you know, less of a man because I couldn't take the pain and such. I think the biggest, ch biggest challenge that the pain has caused me over the years trying to run you know, sort of a, a complete life that I have, which involves, you know, being married, having kids, being self-employed, is time management. Is, is how do I get all of that done and, and be any good at any of it and be in pain? And there's no doubt that before Dr. Jacobs, many things suffered a great deal. Um, and I think things suffered almost equally because it was so unpredictable as to when and how bad the pain was going to be, I would miss days of work. And thank heavens I have an extremely uh, understanding partner who uh, has helped me out a lot. Um, it also doesn't hurt that he doesn't mind being in control of things on a regular basis. I say that with a smile. 
I give my wife enormous credit. There were many times, I mean, when, I, when we were first married and I had, uh, had headaches, she would say to me, she never had a headache until she was about 32 years old, like of any kind. And she said, what do you mean a headache? <laughs> I would roll my eyes, what do you mean a headache? You've never had a headache? No, never had a headache. Well, she finally had one. And just, oh, you mean you have that all the time? Yeah. So once she finally had a headache, it was, she got much better about uh, not wondering what I was doing upstairs in the dark with the cold cloth on my head um, over my eyes and that sort of a thing. I always remember my dad, when I, when I first ended up on morphine, and, and my mother had been a nurse, and I was, of course, telling my parents about my treatment and what was going on and keeping them up to date. And I said to my parents, you know, I'm, I've been put on morphine by the doctor. My father said, morphine? That's for cancer patients. And I said, and for chronic pain patients, Dad. I mean, <laughs> that's what I've been going through. What? It, it just, it was so far beyond his understanding of what, I had gone through or what I've been going through, it took him, well, it was not something that he could comprehend. But again, he came from a generation where showing feelings and all that sort of stuff was just not considered the thing to do. So it's a very, it's a lonely business being in pain because as I, as, as I said, it's not outwardly notable. And on those days when you are just feeling like a bucket of crap, you learn to shut up and take care of yourself because otherwise it's, it's too difficult to bother explaining it to other people. I think the biggest, biggest challenge that the pain has caused me over the years trying to run, you know, sort of a, a complete life that I have, which involves, you know, being married having kids, being self-employed, is time management, is, is how do I get all of that done and, and be any good at any of it and be in pain. And there's no doubt that before Dr. Jacobs, many things suffered a great deal. Um, and I think things suffered almost equally because it was so unpredictable as to when and how bad the pain was going to be, I would miss days of work. And thank heavens I have an extremely uh, understanding partner who uh, has helped me out a lot. Um, it also doesn't hurt that he doesn't mind being in control of things on a regular basis. I say that with a smile. My wife isn't terribly dissimilar. She, uh, they were born within a week of each other, so it's... Uh, they're both nice Virgos and they, uh, they like to be in control. And so my wife doesn't mind being in control, but she also likes it a lot more when I'm there to help her. So uh, now that I've gotten my, uh, my life back together a whole lot more, let's say it's, uh, the road is much smoother. But we've been happily married for 31 years, so most of it's gone very well. But there's no doubt, for example, like my company, I would have loved to have made it grow a lot more than I've been able to because I look after the sales side. Well, it's very difficult to make promises to people about when you're going to come and see them when you don't know how you're going to feel that day. So there's been a real fear factor about making a lot of appointments and too many appointments and the stresses and strains of doing that. So the one thing that I had... Uh, that has really, really helped me was given, a real gift that was given to me actually uh, by one of the doctors um, was the idea that as part of my treatment program I should learn how to meditate. And that has become um, just a key part of my whole being. I, uh, I meditate for about an hour every day and that has taken me, you know, one of the most interesting differences is I heard my voice on tape a couple of weeks ago. 
And I think it was the first time I had heard myself, my voice recorded in probably 10 years. And it sounded so different than what I had heard before. Because before, my voice was sort of more up here and up more higher in my head. But now it was more relaxed and just further down into my chest and back down into my throat. And I know that I am so much calmer a person than I was back then. That, and I know how much that helps my pain because stress has an enormous effect on our, all of our bodies, but for those of us with pain problems, it exacerbates the pain situation and particularly migraines enormously. So, you know, more than anything is the education of doctors. I am, I am so frustrated by the fact that I, I, I see a wonderful pain doctor who is so aware of how to help me with my pain issues, but he isn't my GP. And yet when I go to see my GP, given his choice, he would wean me off of most of the drugs that my pain doctor already has me on. And when I ask him why, he says, because those drugs are really just not very good for you, Mike. And I, and I sit just utterly dumbfounded when he says these things. Now, I'm sure in his own mind that he's 100% correct. Perhaps they are not good for people in general, that it isn't the best thing in the world for me to be taking Hydromorph Cotton on a daily basis. However, if I don't take Hydromorph Cotton on a daily basis, there's 25 employees out here who don't have a job. And there's Mike O'Connell who doesn't have a life or a marriage or three happy kids. Given the choice, and I've made that choice, is I take it.